Hey, it's Brickzar. In this video, we're going to be doing Brickzar answer thingy while picking a Bricklink Lego order. How does one do this? How do I answer these questions while also picking an order? Well, it's just a, a talent that I have. And we're using the tray cam today for these videos. <laughs> so we're, we're picking an order. The first one here in the first five minutes and 48 seconds of the video is for uh, Brick to Bricks. Brick to Bricks. And Brick to Bricks has ordered uh, some pieces. I don't know what they were for. <laughs> but we're using the tray cam. So I did an experiment with the tray cam. I hadn't used it. I had a new setup for the tray cam. It's been a while since we've done a tray cam. But anyway, bear with me as we do the tray, tray cam for Brick to Bricks. And I do have a question from him that we will answer in just a moment. But before we get to that, we're going to cover some of the other questions that people have asked. And since I'm in the BrickLink store right now, I think I'll answer the one from Mardi Gras Man 23. Mardi Gras Man 23 says, "What part do you have the most of in your store?" And Nabu spheres don't count. LOL. <laughs> and it wouldn't be the Nabu sphere. There's a lot of parts I got more than the Nabu spheres although I do have way too many Nabu spheres and they're not all they're not in the store because I had something I still wanted to try to do with them but I may never but anyway the part that I have the most of is probably unloved and I thought I could use it for mosaics and I have used it uh, for mosaics it is actually the tile that I use in I think it's the Brickzar mosaic the Brickzar mosaic has the um, one by one trans red tile. That is the part that I have the most of in my store. And it is, I'll take a picture of it. <laughs> that part I have 20,975. So it kind of inflates your store quantity and in fact if you look at a lot of stores that have a lot of high piece counts they will be massive quantities of pick a brick wall type things so yeah that one i think i got a case of it when they they had them dirt cheap but uh probably shouldn't have done that but it, it only used like a few hundred of them in the mosaic it's the q did i call it a mosaic it's a qr code qr code qr code all right and like Joey May says, if you if, if I give you my grocery list, can you go to Target and get them for me? <laughs> you know what's funny, though? I got to thinking, because that was on that video I was talking about. Um, people just wanted me to give me a list, and then I pick it. I, uh, my daughter, for a while, she was working for those companies like Shipped that you'd go do orders usually for rich people and bring them their groceries they're usually she she would go to target or Publix. and when uh, the covid 19 situation happened <laughs> uh, all of a sudden everybody was doing that and she it was harder to find work so she's not really doing that right now but uh, it's funny <laughs> all right so uh, i get a comment here from darth raynar he says, hello, Jabbo, just curious. I would really like to acquire some of those trays you use uh, while doing the Pablos. I'm wondering where you got them. So the tray we're using right now on this Pablo cam, so it's appropriate question to ask at this point, you can't get it right now. <laughs> so, and um, in fact, Mardi Gras Man or somebody said, I ought to just sell them on eBay or, or something or BrickLink because they're super expensive now. So they were in some containers that you could buy at Toys R Us and you could also get these I think at the Lego store. I got a haul where I got all these big boxes from uh, Toys R Us online where I got those cases when they had them on clearance. So we got them pretty cheap uh, for the time. I don't think I paid full price for any of those containers and I can't see them right now but there's I probably got 15 to 20 of the containers that these came in i think there were six four in each container i had 28 trays with parts in it i've 
eliminated 16 of those. I'm down to 12 trays. I'm trying to get rid of them because each tray has 19 spaces. So that's, you can put a lot of parts in there, but um, the, the trays that I'm using, you don't want to use. So I'll just say that uh, they're square, so it is hard to pick out the small pieces out of them. Uh, it serves a purpose though, and yeah, uh, you can. they're sturdy, they last a long time, but you can find other solutions that might work better for you at a cheaper price. Uh, and there are some trays, they're more flimsy, uh, that you can still purchase from uh, Lego Education. So check out the Lego Education. You'll see what I'm talking about, but it's also very expensive uh, to get that. So the next question, as we get to the end of the, the video for uh, Brick to Bricks, is what is your favorite color of 2x4? Part 3001. That is so easy. I just need a black light to show you. And that part is the trans neon green i also like the trans neon orange two by four but the trans neon green is my favorite color of two by four and probably my favorite color it's my favorite it's my most interesting color there might be other color i do kind of like the coral now if they ever make a coral two by four that would be really awesome and i'd like to see how it looks with the black light it, might, it won't glow as much as the, the trans neon green, the coral, I think would be a good, a cool color to have. So this next tray uh, cam that we're doing is for AV8 PBO, and he ordered a very large order. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, most of the value in this order is in the last couple of things that's going to be in this um, picking of this. But he, it, was about, it was over 100 lots, but most of it's just one of this, two of that, few few was more than that. But um, the reason it was so many little pieces here and there is that AV8 PBO is trying to make all the stupid little Star Wars sets. Those are his words. <laughs> trying to make all the stupid little Star Wars sets. I guess the little micro builds uh, is what he's talking about. Which I think you can pretty much build most of them except for ones like the Millennium Falcon if they got a special printed piece. But even then you could probably substitute something. But uh, the little micro uh, builds. I'm not talking about the micro fighters. It's like the mini builds. So thank you for the order. It was uh, one of the larger ones I've had as far as the dollar amount, but most of it was in a set that's in this. So let's see. <laughs> I just realized somebody commented <laughs> my title of a video. All right. So as I go through uh, looking at my videos for questions, and some of these are obviously, they're not Pablo, I mean uh, Pablo, Bricks Brick are answer thingy questions because it's people finding a video and then asking a question and not realizing I do these videos because it's the first video they found. So I did a video talking about the LGB train that had the bricks on it. it, it you could brick build something. I'll try to remember to put a link to that video. And I still haven't built what I want to build, and I'll just be honest, it's the Little Red Caboose. <laughs> I want to build the Little Red Caboose. Chug, chug, chug. Going down the track, track, track. And, and so I want to build that using one of the bases from that LGB Macklin, Macklin train. And uh, they were kind enough, uh, Train World sent me that train. So I think them can up there from train world for sending me that but um yeah so i still need to build that caboose in fact that's probably something i could do for trains our trains are has been uh, not doing much content lately but on that video cobbs 289 said do standard lego train bogies fit on g scale tracks and the answer to that is no they do not they are closer to the size of um, o scale but they do not fit on G-scale uh, tracks. So now I got to find some more questions. We got another, oh, and I already answered that one. Now somebody asked me about why I've been in a dumpster. I think that might have been the Lego Porg. I can't remember. Somebody asked me, oh, it might have been on one of my other social media. So 
they wanted to know why I'd been in the dumpster twice. And that's not what I said. If you go back and watch the video, I didn't say that I had been in a dumpster twice. Or maybe I did say that. But the point I was making is, it's I can't say that I haven't been in a dumpster once. I can't say that I haven't been in a dumpster twice. It's much more than that. <laughs> so, why d d would I be in a dumpster? I mean, I, the most recent things was... Uh, we did pull uh, the cart that is in my BrickLink store about 20 years ago. I pulled that out of a dumpster. Um, so, no, I haven't been in a dumpster, like, super recently. <laughs> but when I worked at Six Flags, I was in the dumpster a lot. Yes. Um, so there was the more interesting things, like when we, we did take some things out that had gotten thrown away from a Photoshop. They had a Photoshop where you get your picture taken with a celebrity. And when those things got worn out, they would throw them away. When the pictures, they were like plywood cutouts with a picture on it. And you stand next to it in a 2D picture. It looks like you're standing next to Arnold Schwarzenegger or Cindy Crawford. Yeah, who was the other one? I had Arnold and Cindy and Shannon Doherty. I think I had another one. Maybe those are the only three I had. Uh, another guy got David Letterman. I wanted David Letterman, but we all had to fight over him because there weren't multiple copies of each one, and some of them were not usable. But yeah, so I did. We did get those out of a dumpster, and I still had that when I got married, actually. But they're gone now. I used to when we'd have a yard sale. I put Arnold out there at the mailbox, and you could put him in the car. We'd do that, you know, right around town. You have him in the car with like the celebrities in the car with you. So I got that out of a dumpster. And another thing I got out of the dumpster, well, that's the only things I got out of the dumpster. The other thing, the reason I would go into dumpsters is um, sometimes people would lose stuff, like the, their keys or their retainer. And I had this happen many times where uh, one of the restaurants at... Uh, Six Flags, somebody was in a panic because they lost their retainer. And I was like, what's the big deal? I mean, but I didn't realize how expensive those things were and how hard it would be for them to replace them. And if they didn't keep the retainer, you know, your teeth would get crooked again and all that kind of stuff. So what happened is they'd go to the restaurant, they'd take the retainer out to eat, they set it on the tray and then or their keys, and then they'd leave it on the table or throw it in the trash can, you know, when you take your tray and put it in trash in the trash can, set the tray on top of the can or wherever, and then they'd leave and they'd come running back, oh, oh my retainer. And sometimes, you know, the trash is still there <laughs> in the trash can. They hadn't taken it out, but so I was one of the ones that was, my job was to take the trash out. I didn't, that's all I did is sweep and clean tables sometimes. We actually got, eventually we didn't even have to do that, but I was always changing the trash at these food stands and taking the trash back to the dumpster and putting it in the dumpster. So we couple of times or more than a couple more than a couple of times a lot of times uh, they would come back and say that they lost a retainer and usually we wouldn't have to go through too many bags because you know as you throw stuff in the dumpster so if they if they came back quick enough their bag was going to be one of the bags that was on the top and so you would just get the bag and you'd open it up and look through it that's I did it so you'd have to go in the dumpster usually to get the bag and we we did that and sometimes we'd get the bag out and if it was keys it was car keys i would actually like shake the bag or hit the bag on the ground to hear if you if you hear, to listen if you hear anything shaking or the metal sound because most everything in there was paper products cups uh, plastic plates or things like that napkins so there's not any metal so if you shook it and you heard something metal sound and you knew that was the bag that had the car keys in it. So I found car keys like that several times. Uh, but yeah, I'd have to go in there. And the other thing we had to do, which wouldn't be acceptable today for people, and it'd be like a worker violation. And probably Six Flags didn't want us doing it then, but we, I don't know how we started doing this or why, and it's a dumb thing to do, and nobody should ever do this. If your employer makes you do this, you should report them. But so. Th they didn't have compactors. Uh, when I started working at Six Flags, they didn't have trash compactors. They just had a whole bunch of dumpsters. And on certain days when it would get really busy, uh, the, you couldn't put all the trash in the dumpster. It just wouldn't fit. And sometimes we'd have to haul it off to another area uh, that the 
wasn't as busy to to because you don't want to have all the garbage bags just sitting on the ground because the, then the dump dump truck can't get the dumpster truck can't get to them. Yeah. So uh, if we had a you know okay. some bags outside the dumpster, we would get in the dumpster and jump up and down on the trash and pack it down. Um, that is definitely a safety violation. It's you can get seriously injured. You could get you know if people put needles or other things in the trash you're at risk of getting stabbed i mean i know that uh, safety reasons now you're not even supposed to push down the trash in a trash can because you could stab yourself and get a serious um, uh, infection from somebody uh, so but yeah we would get on top of the trash and pounce on it so we could put more trash bags in it so yeah that's how i ended up in a dumpster and that's really not the, probably the thing you want to um <laughs> hear me talking about right now but there you go that's what i did <laughs> so anyway thank you thanks again for everybody that's been asking questions i do want to get more of these videos where i answer uh your questions and i've, I've looked oh here's one so i did reply to this guy because i think this is another question that was asked but uh it was from somebody who uh, just came across the video they don't know that I do an answer series and <laughs> so doing BrickLink selling stuff in my BrickLink store been doing it for years and uh, there's a video about me working on my BrickLink and it, this was a video from the time when the phone company had a strike so I didn't go to work for a few days because I didn't want to cross the picket line and the strike wasn't very long. I don't remember how long it was. <laughs> it wasn't very long. It was a few days, I think. And I, I, I don't, I don't even know if it was a full week. But so I knew that I'd be losing a lot of income because the phone company pays me well. I wasn't going to have that income, so I said I'm going to get busy. I'm going to make videos. And videos I think that would do well. So I think I did a lot of train videos then when I was stuck at home. And those videos did do very well. But I also wanted to do uh, make get active in the BrickLink store. And that's how this boom I got going now. It probably started then because uh, I was adding parts and uh, doing things to increase sales in my BrickLink store. So I got really busy with that. And now we're just we're cooking. I think basically what I'm making on BrickLink now... Uh, if this was the 90s, I could live off of it, I think. I think I could do more to uh, part out more because, you know, we're doing this part time. I'm doing this after work on the weekends. My wife is picking the orders for me during the day, and she doesn't work like an eight hour day picking orders. She can usually do the orders we get for the day in about an hour, depending on how many we get. Uh, this, she, she has had some really bad orders that take a long time to pick, but uh, for the most part, We'll get four or five orders during the day, and she'll say, oh, I'll go do this. This is like 20 lots. This one's like 15 lots. This one's 30 lots. And she does them in about an hour or so. And But, you know, we make a pretty good amount for that. And then, of course, you got to subtract. The, you know, that's time invested, the materials, the, the containers that we have. Uh, the, you had to buy the stuff and to begin with. So just because you may, sold this amount in a day, that that's... Yeah, obviously there was an expense that went into that. So if I say you made a hundred dollars, you didn't make a hundred dollars. You made like thirty or forty, probably, by the time you get your expenses. That's why it's good to get things that are more than two times the value. And that's what I've been really working on. Is some of these things I've been parting out were five to six to ten times uh, the, the value of what I paid for it. So like I spent a hundred dollars, the part out value is six hundred. That's what I've been looking at. stuff like that. <laughs> But anyway, the question, I've talked long enough, but the question from Yerbel is, is it worth your time? Do you do it full time? I think I've been pretty clear. So, And then I did go back and watch that video, and I did explain that I wasn't working because the company was on strike. And, I, and that was like within the first couple of minutes of the video. So I'm like, did you watch the video? <laughs> but... No, I don't do this full time, but it, it can feel like it's full time because I do work on it a few hours. Uh, I probably work on BrickLink about two to three hours a day when I come home from work. Uh, 
either fulfilling orders or parting out things or rearranging things. So I, I, I do work on it. I don't know how many hours. I, I should probably keep a tally of how, how many hours I work on it each week. But is it worth your time? Absolutely. Right now it is. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it's definitely worth the time. I mean, I don't know if my hour, if you were to figure it out as an hourly rate, it's probably not as much as what I make with the phone company. But when you have all the initial, like the, the time invested in this is usually parting things out and putting them in the store. So once they're in the store, boom, that's good. So it's like, I could sit here for weeks and never add anything to the store and we're just picking orders each day. And orders don't take that long usually and you know you can make a couple of two or three hundred dollars a, a day. I, I have like this the last two weekends I've had five hundred dollars in sales each each weekend. So it's like that's that's money that I wouldn't have had otherwise and I probably got less than two hundred dollars in, in that. So I made three hundred. But it, it wasn't like I was working all weekend on it. I was taking longer because I was doing these picking a brick link Lego orders. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> they, they take longer. But I appreciate people doing that. And uh, I want to thank so much everybody that's ordered from me. I want to thank AV8 PBO for this massive order that he made. And I want to thank uh, again, who was the first one from Brick to Bricks? And so I hope you enjoyed this format of me talking over uh, the picking of the BrickLink Lego order. If you would like to do one, please don't. <laughs> please don't right now. Because uh, I, I have done a lot of them. And it's, um, I want to try to s slow down on those. And I'm, I, I went on BrickLink the other day and was trying to figure out the coupon code. So I haven't figured out how to have like a coupon code where you there's got to be a way where you can just say a word in checkout and it, it calculate it for you or maybe i'm just gonna have to say if you want a discount email me and i'll your username and i'll give you a discount or something like that i got it or i gotta figure out something so um if you may point me to tutorial on how to easily do coupons let me know that's something i don't know I don't know about BrickLink because I haven't ever investigated it. I'm sure it's out there and can be found. But anyway, thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like Trans Neon Green. And buy some Trans Red one by one from my store. I'll see you in the next video. I'm Jabo. What did I do with my, oh man, where did I put it? I lost my iPad. All right, let's see how this goes. I don't know if this will work. Is that over there? Oh, volume's up. Testing. Volume. Testing. All right. Let's try this. I am going to be picking a brick link order. I've never done this before. Yes, I mean, I picked the brake link order before, but I've never filmed it like this. So the audio is going to be terrible. Let's just deal with it. I need a tray.
Are you ready? Can you see me? Still working? Done. All right, so that one is done. So Pablo Cam working? Yeah. So we're going to stop that 